Got an interesting question for you today. One NAND chip or two on the M1 MacBook Air? Uh, we know that the new M2 MacBook Air, at least the entry model, comes with a single NAND flash chip for its storage. And the M1 MacBook Air always came with two. What I'd like to know is whether that's still the case. Does the entry level M1 MacBook Air still come with two 128 gigabyte NAND chips? Uh, let's find out. We've had a few of these M1 MacBook Airs turn up at the office and we've been waiting quite a while for them because when the M2 MacBook Air was launched suddenly the M1 MacBook Air went out of stock everywhere at Apple mysteriously. Uh, anyway, uh, let's take a look. Uh, here's one that I opened earlier. Now we also have some of the MacBook Airs that we bought long before the M2 MacBook Air was released uh, which definitely do have two NAND chips in so we could just do a, uh, a speed test on the drive and compare the two together but where's the fun in that? Uh, let's take it apart and to do that I'm going to put a protective mat down on the table because I have been known to break things. So we have actually uh, started this Mac up and just set it up briefly so that we can turn off the auto boot function. I don't want to accidentally trigger that when I take the back of the laptop off. Uh, and on the back of the, or the base of the laptop, there are three different sizes of screws. Uh, so these two here are one size, these two are a different size again, and all of these at the front are another size. So it's really important if you are taking your MacBook Air apart for some reason to just keep track of those screws. So uh, we'll speed this bit up. So moment of truth, the back is off. There are two NAND flash chips. That's amazing, excellent. So if you take a look at the inside of the MacBook Air, we've got our batteries here. Uh, underneath this cover, that's where you'd find the M1 chip. And these are our two NAND flash chips here. And this is a 256 gigabyte model, so those must be uh, 128 gigabyte chips. And I know from looking at other pictures of teardowns of these notebooks, sometimes the size of the chip is actually written on it, but I can't see any reference to it on these particular chips. So we just wanna double confirm this by running uh, a quick speed test on the drives, and we can compare this notebook with one that was manufactured long before the M2 was announced. Uh, so let me just put this back together and we'll get set up for that. So we've got our two MacBook Airs set up. This one we bought in January. Uh, this is actually a 16 gigabyte model. Uh, so it's got 16 gig of RAM, but it is still a 256 storage. Uh, and this one was delivered yesterday. So uh, let's see whether they perform the same using a Blackmagic disk speed test. And I've just realized I can't actually see the screen, so. look pretty similar to me. So I think we can fairly confidently say if you buy an entry level M1 MacBook Air today, it still comes with two 128 gigabyte NAND flash chips. And that's a good thing, uh, but it raises a few questions. I mean, first of all, I haven't been able to find out when the manufacturing date was for this laptop. Uh, I can't see it anywhere on the box and I've researched the serial number and uh, my usual sources don't seem to have that serial number in yet. So it does seem that this is a recently manufactured device. So this starts to bring up questions about why Apple has chosen to go with a single NAND chip in the M2 MacBook Air. Uh, clearly it's not a supply chain constraint, unless of course they'd already bought all of the NAND flash chips for the M1 MacBook Airs. Uh, so let's stop the test. Don't wanna overheat the SSDs. An interesting question I think is why did the M1 MacBook Air go out of stock? Uh, it seemed to me that it was almost on the same day that all of the Apple retail stores across the UK went out of stock of this computer. At the same time, all of the resellers went out of stock of these models as well, right at the moment when the M2 MacBook Air went on sale. And I guess you can make of that what you will. Um, we needed to order four of these and we ordered them direct from our business contact at Apple. And we were given a four to six week lead time. 
and uh, the order didn't get updated and then we noticed Amazon had them back in stock so we cancelled the order with Apple and bought them from Amazon uh, for less money as well than even with our Apple discount that we get. So if you want to pick up one of these machines it still has that super fast SSD on the entry level model. It's a great computer, it's available at a discount. We'll put some links to Amazon in the description. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. Thanks as always for your subs, your likes, your shares. I look forward to reading your comments and see you again soon for some more geekery.